Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, the days are getting longer, a little more daylight. That is always welcome to this time of year. And even though it is only February, today is one of the highlights, at least for me, this time of year, and that's because it is our annual Summer Preview Expo. If you go into the Fellowship Hall following worship this morning, you will see tables are set up promoting all of the various opportunities to be engaged in our life together this summer. There are wonderful opportunities for you to be replenished, refreshed, to be recreated. And so we invite you to stop in there and take a look. Also, keep your eyes peeled in the mail in the coming days. You should be receiving your 2020 Summer of Recreation brochure. And I encourage you as an individual, as a couple, and as a family to sit down and turn through the pages. There is something in here for everyone. I promise you that. And I am convinced deeply that when we gather together as a community of faith in ways such as we have offered this summer, there are powerful and profound things that can happen. So I invite you to take a look at that. And then in the process, perhaps, being open to being changed, to being transformed. There was, um, I've had lots of opportunities to participate in many of our summer of recreation experiences over the years. But there's one that comes to mind as it relates very well to our scripture reading from Matthew that we heard Jerry read just moments ago. I had the privilege of joining 19 of our youth and four other chaperones when we went backpacking in Montana a couple of summers ago. It was a wonderful trip and uh, where we had the opportunity just to experience the wilderness and to experience God's creation. The highlight of that trip for most, if not everyone, was the day that we climbed a mountain peak. Our high schoolers climbed Pinnacle Peak, which was just over 10,600 feet above sea level. And the middle schoolers, we climbed Pinnacle, or we climbed Columbine Peak, that was just over 10,000 feet. 200 feet above sea level, and we set out early that morning and made our way over stream crossings and vegetation through some snow fields as we worked our way up, and there we were met with some scree fields. Scree is just really, really loose rock. You have to watch your footing. This wasn't technical climbing, by the way. There, wasn't, there were not any ropes or harnesses or carabiners. But eventually, we reached the summit, right? And there, we were welcomed with some absolutely breathtaking, stunning views of the wilderness of God's creation. It was an absolutely wonderful and beautiful day. It seems to me that many of us have had experiences where we find ourselves in a place where we can see forever and ever. We can see to the very ends of the earth that we can have these experiences that we often refer to as mountaintop experiences. And that adventure a couple summers ago was definitely one of those for me. And I think it's safe to say for everyone who was on that trip. So today's gospel reading from Matthew has to be the ultimate mountaintop experience. I mean, think about it for just a moment. Here we have Moses, we have Elijah, and we have Jesus that are in communion with one another, in relationship with one another, and also with God in that very moment. 
And that experience just blows the mind of the disciples away. They cannot believe what they are seeing in that moment. They are flabbergasted as they see before their eyes Jesus transfigured, Jesus transformed, changed. In that moment, there is that aha, that moment that says, this is the Son of God. And then they hear that voice to listen to him. So it's no wonder that Peter would wanted to have stayed there, to have hung out on the mountaintop and just continued to absorb that experience in its breadth and depth. I mean, think about in that moment, the ultimate mountaintop experience. Who would want to leave that? And yet, if I think back on our trip a few summers ago, there was something that I was most certain of that I knew without a doubt before we even stepped foot out of our tents early in the morning the day we climbed the peak. I knew it before we even crossed our first stream, our first snow field. I knew it before we even made it to the very top of the mountain. And that was... Eventually, we would have to come down. Mountaintops are not meant to be lived on. They're meant to be climbed, for sure, but they're also meant to be descended down from. Perhaps that is the most powerful and beautiful image from our reading from Matthew, that given all of the beauty that had taken place up on the mountain. In the very end, Jesus comes down. He comes down from the mountain and enters again into the very reality of the lives of the people around him, knowing that by coming down, that the cross will indeed be waiting for him. When all is said and done, Jesus comes down from the mountain and enters into the pain and suffering, the trials and tribulations, the loneliness and the grief of a hurting world and surrounds it with love, with grace and forgiveness. He comes down from the mountain and enters into death so that you and I may have life, so that death will never have the last word. He comes down from the mountain and meets us in our joys, to be sure, but also in our unbelief, in our doubt, our hurt, our grief, our anger, our brokenness. He comes down for the youngest of the young, the oldest of the old, and everyone in between. He comes down for those who are struggling from addiction and mental illness. He comes down for those who are sick and who are dying. He comes down for those who are dealing with broken relationships and broken families. He comes down for those who are wandering, those who are lost, and those who are all alone. He comes down from the mountain out of a deep abundance of love for you and for me. My hope is that this summer you may have that mountaintop experience, whether it's the literal or the figurative, and then you come down from the mountain and share that experience with the rest of the world in love and service to one another. Even though it's only February, my hope for you on this day and in the weeks to come, and yes, this summer, my hope for you is that you are renewed, that you are refreshed, that you are replenished, that you are recreated. Let it be so. Amen.